When a Civil 3D project is hosted on a local server, users can open and edit design files by simply navigating to the appropriate project folders. When a project is hosted in the cloud, however, access is a bit more exclusive. You see, when working in the cloud, Civil 3D projects are made available by invitation only. In this session, we'll learn how to invite members to a cloud-based Civil 3D project. I'll start by launching my web browser and I'll log into BIM 360 Docs. As you can see, it remembers the last project we accessed. That said, if I open this menu at the top, I can select any project from here, or BIM 360 account for that matter, in the event I wanted to navigate to a different project. I'll click outside the menu to close this. From the Document Management module, I'll click the waffle and I'll select Project Admin. Remember in the last session I assigned myself as the project admin for this project. That's why I can see this option among the other items in this menu. It's important to note that a project admin designation is required to add new members to a project. In the project admin area, I'll select members to see a list of all stakeholders who've been invited to the Route 25 Improvements project. Currently, I'm the only member. To invite additional members, I'll click the Add button. I can then enter each stakeholder's name or email address. For this example, I'm going to invite an engineer named Bill Sherman. I'll do that by typing his email address in the box. When I'm finished, I'll press Enter. In addition to Bill, I'd also like to invite Jerry Bartles and Alan Gilbert. Now, since Jerry and Alan have been invited to other projects in my BIM 360 account, they are recognized users, so I can add them by simply typing their names. When I'm finished adding members, I'll click the Select button. At this point, I can assign each member a company and a role. Companies and roles help organize project members into logical groups. Note that each member can be assigned multiple roles if desired. To the right of each member is a series of toggles that can be used to grant access to project services. Clicking the icons will change their status. As an example, I can see that everyone is currently a member of the Document Management Service. If I click the icon, I can take that person's access away. When I do that, I'm warned that new users must have access to at least one service. So I'm going to click to put that back. If I wanted to, I could make any member a project admin by clicking this icon. When I do, you can see that they also become an admin of the Document Management Service. This means they would have full administrative control over the project directories and contents, and they would have the power to add or remove members from the project. For now, I'm going to click to put things back the way they were. Finally, we'll touch on the Insight service. This service allows users to configure and view data and analytics associated with a project. Now, this service is typically used during the construction phase. For that reason, I will not be granting anyone access to this service at this time. When I'm finished adding members, I'll click the Add to Project button, which also triggers an invitation email to be sent to each member. I am then returned to the Project Admin area, where I can see the new members have been added to the project. Note that from here, I have the ability to edit many of the same properties we saw a moment ago. In fact, selecting the box next to a person's name, I can also remove a member from a project if necessary. For now, I'd like to keep Alan, so I'll click to remove this check. Whenever you add members to a project, it's essentially a two-step process. We have just completed step one. The next step is to assign the permissions that control how these users access the project directories. I'll do that by clicking the waffle, and I'll jump to Document Management. From here, I can see the directory structure. To start, I'm going to find the Drawings folder that I made in the previous session. I will then click the ellipsis button, or I can simply right-click on the folder, and from the menu, I'll choose Permissions. This shows me how many people have access to this folder. Currently, it's just me, because I'm the project admin. To grant other users access to this folder, I'll click the Add button. Note that I can assign permissions by individual user, role, or company. Selecting a role or company can be a great way to assign rights to several members at one time. For this example, I'm going to add Bill Sherman, and then I can choose his permission level. Note there are multiple levels ranging from view only all the way up to full administrative control. For this example, I'm going to allow Bill to view, download, upload, and edit the files in this folder, pretty much everything he would need to work on Civil 3D drawings. I'll click Add when finished, and you can see Bill has been added to the folder. Note that from here I can change or remove access at any time. When I'm finished, I'll click the X to close the permissions. It's important to note that when you assign permissions, those permissions are applied to the current folder and all subfolders. As an example, I'm going to right-click on the Project Files folder and I'll choose Permissions. Let's add Jerry and Alan to this folder. Since they both work for Autodesk, I can simply assign permissions to the company and those permissions will automatically apply to Jerry and Alan. 
I will then give them view, download, upload, and edit permissions, and I'll click add. When I'm finished, I'll click the X to close this. After applying the Autodesk permissions to the Project Files folder, we'll find that they have also been applied to the Drawings subfolder. Right here, we can see how the permissions have been inherited. These permissions will also pass to any future subfolders. Once again, I'll click the X to close the permissions. One final thought. The folder permissions you apply in BIM 360 control how the folders display when stakeholders view them in BIM 360 or inside Windows Explorer using the desktop connector. Generally speaking, stakeholders will only see folders for which they have permissions. All other folders will be hidden from them. All right, now that we understand how to invite members to a project, we're ready to jump over to Civil 3D and begin creating and uploading content. And we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore additional Autodesk Cloud Collaborative ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the AEC Connection blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.